everybody, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. Sorry I haven't been doing as many videos as usual, I'm going to do a separate video talking about that, um, just a channel update and stuff like that. But, um, today I'm going to be doing my completed pages for September and I did not get as many pictures done as I wanted to. I think it's partly because I'm getting back into school now, uh, year 10 is big in terms of homework, I have to prioritise school and um, family and things before my YouTube videos which, you know, I feel really guilty about but um, I'm just quite busy at the moment and my teaching as well. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did and it's still a fair amount but um, yeah, it just wasn't as much as I would have liked to do. Um, the video that I hope to film is just going to talk about um, a couple of things that um, are going to change, Not they're not massive changes, but just things that I want to talk about in a video. So um, if you're wondering where I've been and stuff and um, what's going to be happening, make sure to check out that colour and chat that I will hopefully do at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get started with my completed pages and I hope you enjoy. I love these videos so much. So, first book, uh, Daydreams, and I did a tiny, tiny page. Um, I was watching Peaky Blinders last Sunday, um, it was the finale, and when I watch TV I never get much colouring done, so I thought I'll just do some small things. So one of the things I did was the little mushroom at the start because I thought, well, it's just a quick, easy one to do. I haven't put a name tag on this one randomly, but just so you're aware, all the tags for my completed pages are in pink. I've got tags for a different thing that I want to do soon, so just ignore those. So this was um, Faber-Castell Eco and Classic pencils. Very, very simple. Um, I just added a bit of Posca. I finally got a white pen that's thicker than a will signal that I'm really happy with and I didn't realise so I had a thin Posca and it was awful I think it was a 3M well this is a 5M PC 5M and it's amazing and I'm using it constantly um, so so good so I'm really enjoying using that for the bigger areas so I just went over the dots with that um, and I really enjoyed doing this one and it didn't take long so I'm calling that a completed page it's technically not but um some of my pages will be like that and there's quite a few whips to show you and here's one of them so I'm really hoping to get these whips finished at some point but it just hasn't turned out that way um, in my colour chat I'm also going to talk about my live streaming and how I'm not going to be doing it for a while just because of various things that I've tried and yeah I'm going to talk about that in the colour chat this is a page I started on the live stream one of the live streams. Um, I've started using a teaser gouache on this. I still need to go in and do a bit more gouache, but I haven't gone over with pencil yet, like I said I would. Again, I just didn't have time. And I kind of thought for this month, um, if I don't have much time to colour, I'd rather colour things that I'm feeling. I'd rather do stuff that I want to do rather than being pushed into um, doing things just to get it finished, just to have another computer page. Um, so... Yeah, I just, I thought I'd rather go about it that way. Um, so this I haven't finished yet, but I'm hoping to uh, soon. The other thing is, is I was also colouring 12 postcards for Auntie Lynn. We saw um, Auntie Lynn and Uncle Jim yesterday. Um, so I was busy colouring those as well, and I was busy colouring some of my grandma in August. So that took up quite a lot of time as well. I really enjoyed doing them, uh, but it did mean that, Obviously I can't show them for you here, but it did mean I had less time for other colouring and stuff as well. And on top of that, my art GCSE is very demanding. Um, and, you know, I'm still doing art, so I might show you that. It, leave a comment if you would like to see what art stuff I do each month for art GCSE, because it's arty, it's kind of the same sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this is this one. Um, I need to do a bit more gouache, go over it with pencil, and then, yeah, that's that. That's from Spruce Just Boss by Thomas Love Tomic. I love that book and I need to finish that page because it's gorgeous. Okay, next whip I have is Romantic Country, the second tale. 
I really, really want her history book. I um, am waiting on a flip through um, for it. I think I um, commented on Colin Francis and asked her if she would be able to do one. I absolutely love it. It's quite expensive and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it, but I would absolutely love it because I'm really into history and I, um, I'm i doing it for GCSE. It's something that I've always been interested in. Um, so oh, I don't know, but I would absolutely love that. And um, I just love her illustrations. So this is the one I'm currently working on. Again, I did this on streams. Because I'm not going to be streaming stuff, I'll finish this in my own time at some point. But I'm loving the colour palette and I like the fact that I've gone in and done details on bits already. Just because I like I like um, doing it actually. I've really enjoyed putting them in as I go along and working on one little bit. I find I just enjoy it more because when you're zooming in on one area... It doesn't seem as scary to complete a page, but I love this. Um, I love the design so much. Um, and yeah, I just need to finish it. So that's that one. And so far I've used a very, various pencils, mostly Prismacolor, a couple of Holbein's, a couple of Faber-Castell here and there. But I've put some jelly rolls and uh, metallic pens on that. Okay, on to Zendoodle Colouring. This is the Magical Fairies one by Deborah Miller. This is the book that I won on Nikki's uh, giveaway. Um, I've actually, I actually have done a bit in this. The first thing that I did was just experimenting with the ink tents. Along with this book, um, I received a set of 12 ink tents and I was using in this book the ink tents with some of my Neo Colours. So these are the Neo Colours I have. Uh, it's a small collection, but um, I use these colours quite a lot in my colouring. And oops, and I've collected these over time. In fact, the other day I did buy these two. Um, but this is pro these are probably about two, two, three years old now, and I do use them a lot. It both in my art, card making. And now I have this book and I'm going to use them in here. So I was testing out those and using my ink tents. They're gorgeous, by the way. Um, and then I've just gone over with various glitter things and silver pens. And yeah, I've gone a bit crazy with the jelly roll and the wink of cellar and stuff. But that's that one. I was testing out doing a skin tone with... Uh, this fairy before I got the skin that was with ink tents this but I was trying out mixing them together um, and this is before I got that neo color oh sorry by the way I've got a cut here um it's I was doing lino cutting and the lino had gone hard and I was um cutting it and I kept grazing my finger it's really annoying but uh, don't mind that um so that's that and then the actual picture I did I'm so happy I did this was this page and this was a real experiment for me um i had a lot of fun it's a bit crinkly which i really like none of the stuff really bled through apart from a couple of fine liners that i was using a couple of things ghosted but i practically use no pencil on this i think i used a couple of crayola pencils but um most of this was ink tents neo color and these Pens. Have I got them to show you? Let me get them. I found these at John Lewis for one pound on clearance. These are Helix Oxford Color Gel. Um, so they're not fine liners. Well, they are fine liners, but they're more gel pen. Um, but they dry really quickly. And I use those all here for accenting on these and on the flowers. I love how this flowers came out. But yeah, I went crazy with the wink of Stella on her wings because I thought she's a fairy. Why not? I use my jelly rolls. I use Uniball Signo Silver Gel Pen. Um, speaking of glitter gel pens, uh, yesterday when we saw Uncle Jim and Auntie Lynn, they very, very kindly got me these glitter gel pens. And I had some on my list, my birthday list. 
but um sorry for the glare um i had some i'd found some uh that was similar to these and auntie lena bought these for herself when uh we went to stay with them in canada and i used them and i absolutely loved them and um and then yeah they surprised me with them yesterday so i no longer need them on my list and i'd gone and searched on amazon uk and amazon us they didn't have them as far as i knew um so I found some alternatives that weren't, that didn't look as good. And oh my God, I love them. I've already swatched them and I'm going to show you the swatch. They open up like this. You get 48 and then 48 refills. So um, these are absolutely gorgeous. There's some very unusual colours as well. So I only have a couple of jelly walls. I have about four or five, but I'm really looking forward to using glitter gel pens more in my pictures now. So I swatched them. They are here and they're all glittery and gorgeous. Some of my favourites are this greeny grey colour, uh, silver colour, this light pink, these two blues. They don't really show up that well on the, the camera, but they're kind of slate blue colours. I love the orange. There are some really, really lovely colours and they're just so glittery. Oh, oh I love them. So I'm really looking forward to using those. So... I will, I will have more of a selection for my um, embellishments but yeah this is this one and I'm really happy with that actually um, it was an experimental page and now I know in this book that I can use more um, uh, mixed media like that. I think I had a couple of pages marked out for autumn which I might get to it depends but yeah I absolutely love this book Okay, next book. Now, you won't know what this book is, and I'm just going to grab the cover. So, we were um, out somewhere the other day, and uh, we went to an Oxfam um, shop that has lots of books. And um, I came across this book. This is the cover, and it's Kenny and the Dragon uh, by Tony D to Lizzie, sorry. Um, he is the author of the Spiderbook Chronicles. I loved them when I was a kid. Well, I am a kid, but you know, when I was younger. Um, and I loved those books. I've still got them. The illustrations were gorgeous. So when I looked inside this, I was like, oh my god. These images are gorgeous. They remind me of Sylvanian families a bit. Let me... Um, but I absolutely love them i've read the story already i know what it's about um it's kind of a twist on george and the dragon this bunny kevin makes kevin oh kenny um becomes friends with this dragon called graham and um he's not like usual dragon he's really friendly he's into poetry um and then his friend george who is a badger um, he's George from George and the Dragon and he wants to fight the dragon off because he's a dragon slayer uh, and it tests their friendship and they come up with a plan and yeah it's really cool um, I love the book and I love the illustrations and I've coloured the first page or the first illustration that's in this um, which is this one so I like the idea with this that there are some illustrations scattered through the book, so if I ever finished it, I would have the whole book with completed pages. And this was £2, and I love the paper as well. So I used um, my eco pencils and things. This was also done when I was watching Peaky Blinders. Very simple, I haven't embellished this at all. I just thought it's an on nice ivory paper, and I thought I'd just leave it as it is. Um, but I'm going to try and work through this in order. But I absolutely love it. And it was a lovely story to read as well. Okay, next book is Schema Teached. <clears throat> this picture took me ages to finish. And it shouldn't have taken me that long, but especially in the middle of the month, I just had all of these whips and I couldn't finish them. Just, there was so many and I was a bit overwhelmed, but I did finish this one. And I started this when I did the colour and chat with my cousins, Rosie and Noah. And this was the um, fritillaries. Um, and I finished this one up and I just did a couple of greens for the, the stalks and stems and things like that. Didn't add any glitter, I just had a bit of white gel pen. You can't even really tell the white gel pen's there, so I might go over it. Um, 
I'm really upset this was the only page that I did in this book this month because I managed to do so many last month. I think you remember I did a ton. But I picked some pictures out to do for the autumn winter season and I'm really hoping I can get to them. Uh, all of the page flags that are in these books um, is that because I want to do a video showing all of the autumn winter pages that I'm, well, some of them that I might get round to in the coming months. So I did one for spring, so I'm, that's what I'm planning on doing when I get the opportunity. Okay, next book is The Flower Year, and I didn't get as much done as I would have liked to again in this book but I did what I did and I have to keep telling myself these pages are so detailed and I want each and every one to look good so I'm taking my time so the first one I did was again a really quick one I think I did this the other night when I was watching tv it might have been when we were watching um strictly or something I can't remember these are grape hyacinths and I just used a couple of colours I think they were the eco pencils, um, the classics, and I really like how it turned out. It's a very simple one, not much effort required, but it's nice that there are. Oh, sorry, there are some simple pages in this book. Okay, then I did my main picture, which was September, and this page took forever. I don't think I completed this. I think it took me about three weeks on and off. I wasn't doing it continuously but it took ages, maybe not quite so long. So originally I had I had done everything and then I had the background and I was going to do a background in blue but then I looked at it and I thought well, I think the blue is going to take away from it too much so I decided on this creamy sand colour because I wanted something that would contrast this pinky white because it's very light yeah, and I'm happy with it. As I say, my favourite my favourite month picture is still the June one. Um, but I'm fairly happy with this one and it was quite a challenge to do just because it was very detailed. Of course, all of her pictures are detailed practically, so they're never not going to be. But um, yeah, I do, I do like how it turned out and I loved doing the autumn leaves. Okay, then I've got a width that's been going on for a while. Um, this is going to be ongoing and um, it will be a nice break up thing from more, um, uh, what's it called, like autumn pictures because this is a bouquet of flowers. So I'm going to keep coming back to this. I've got the colours put aside. And it's just going to take me a while. I think I've done about three more flowers since you saw last time, but actually meant to go this way so it probably won't be done at the end of October so we will see and finally I have begun on the October and this is a bit brighter than I would usually do but I followed a Chris Chang tutorial for this crab apple and I am fairly happy with it I do find following tutorials are quite tricky just because Obviously, they use quite a lot of colours, and I tried to make it my own a tiny bit by adding various things here and there. But it is quite bright compared to other stuff I've done, but I want this book to be realistic. And I was searching up crab apples, and there weren't really any good pictures. So I thought, oh, well, I'll give this tutorial a go. And I love Chris Chang's tutorials, and I'm hoping once the crab apples are done, and the leaves are done, and the berries and stuff won't take too long, so... I'm hoping it will be a fairly quick-ish page once I get started properly. So that's that one. She's got so many gorgeous tutorials. And so has Colouring with Elena on that as well. So I might give some of those a go. And finally we have the Ink House. Oh my god, I'm in love with this book. It's so amazing. Oh, I've enjoyed colouring in it so much. I have, well, I have a double spread in this book finished and I have a page that's almost finished so I'm really hoping to either get it done tonight or tomorrow um, so if I can actually get to them I completed a double spread in here this took me a while but I enjoyed every minute of it the paper is gorgeous I tried to think carefully about my colour palette because I really wanted it to turn out well 
Uh, so these are the teapots and um, I've decided in this book when I'm embellishing to just use white Posca and white gel pen and a Uniball Signos silver gel pen. I'm not going to use glitter, um, I'm just going to stick to that because I think it makes it look a bit more vintage and oh I need to rub that mark off. Um, so my colour palette for this, well my original thought was I was going to try and do all of them Emma Bridgewater style. If you don't know Emma Bridgewater, that um, it's company and she makes all of these gorgeous plates and teapots and um, mugs and things like that. And we've got quite a lot of her stuff. Um, we actually went to one of her studios. Um, but so these are based on Emma Bridgewater. So if you just search up Emma Bridgewater teapots, you can see that the the um, polka dot ones are on there. And then she has heart ones as well, so I tried to emulate the heart one on that, and I use the same colours for that heart one. Oh, I've also done another polka dot one there, but slightly different. And then I thought, well, I'll take the blue from the polka dots and do the blue, and also these blue ones already had a light layering of blue, so I thought, well, I'm going to have to do the blue anyway. Then I took the yellow and did these goldy ones. And then I thought, well, this peachy colour just goes quite well with the pink, so I just did that. Uh, and I thought, well, it will go well with the blue as well. And then, yeah, and then I did the brown. And then I did, oh, Rocco. Rocco the chick. So cute. Um, if I had thought about it a bit more, maybe I wouldn't have put the gold against the gold. But I thought that looked like a genie lamp. So I thought that would be quite cool. Um, and then we have the dormouse. I'm not sure if that's meant to be Maestro, whether it's just a dormouse. But I don't know. And then the other picture is this one. So I've taken the same teapot colours and I've just put them into this picture. I've done all the embellishments and everything already on the teapots. All I've got left to do is the, oh my god, she's so cute, Mary Shelley. Um, I've just got her to do. My, her helmet's going to be the red colour like this. Her shell is going to be browny green in the, and then I've got a different colour for her body. And then I'm probably, just so that it's complete, I'll probably just colour that teapot in at some point. But I love the, the images in this book so much and I can't wait to do more on this. It's absolutely stunning. Um, Sue, you were right in saying that I would love this. I absolutely do. And thank you so much for giving this to me because I am enjoying this so much. And it's not that thick, really. So I would love to complete this one day. Absolutely. Oh, my God. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> so, yeah, I really hope I can do more on this. So that is everything. It looked like quite a lot. To me, I was showing you quite a lot of whips, so it didn't look like that much to me. But I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of my pages. I really hope I can get more done this month. And I'm going to try and do that colour and chat so I can explain to you what's going on. So watch out for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to comment down below. My email's in the description if you want to contact me. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.